Hi everyone, it's KJM My Tech Guy here, and today's going to be a Q&A style video because I've gotten a lot of really good questions over the past couple of weeks. And before I head out to CES tomorrow, I wanted to be able to just answer a lot of questions that you had regarding school, regarding tech, and whatever else. So yeah, let's get right into it. Arlette asks, if you could start over again, what would you do differently? Any regrets? Honestly, there aren't really too many things that I regret at this point. The way that I went through MIT and the way that I went through my classes, I think it was a pretty natural progression. I got to experiment with a lot of different classes and take the different classes that I was interested in. And so there weren't any real regrets there. In terms of this YouTube channel, I just wish that I had started earlier so that I could build that platform, not while I was in the middle of just starting my first major classes. JC Martim asks, what are the values you live by? Honestly, the main value that I live by is believe in yourself. The thing that I hate is when people don't believe in themselves in certain situations, especially when they're certainly fit for whatever role that they were trying to achieve or whatever goal they were trying to achieve, they were perfectly capable, but the only thing holding them back was themselves. That's the thing that I dislike the most. So that's why I really push to have people just be themselves and really believe in themselves because people around you won't be able to believe in you if you can't believe in yourself. It's really Abby asks, if you hadn't been an aerospace engineer, what other major would you have chosen? So. I've actually thought about this with my friends quite a bit, and I think the major that I would have chosen would have been mechanical engineering, but I would have specialized in computer science. So at MIT, that major would have been 2AB, which is mechanical engineering with computer science. So it's a little bit of a joint degree where I would be able to take my CS classes as usual, but also be able to learn like the physics and the mechanical aspects of systems, which I really enjoy. The next question is, what do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Honestly, 10 years is pretty far down the road. I just know that next year I want to go to grad school. And after that, whether that leads me into an executive position at a bigger company or leads me to starting my own company, I don't know yet. I think I do want to end up starting something someday, but whether that will be in the next 10 years or not, I'm not too sure. The Canadian Spanish Asian dude asks, how long does it take you to study on average? Honestly, it varies. Um, there have been classes where the homework assignments for that class have taken, say, 20 hours a week or 30 hours a week, and other classes where it's only been like three or four or five hours of reading outside of classes that I've had to do. So it really varies, depends on the course load for that given semester, but if you do have a couple of those really tough classes in one semester, that could be really rough and you'll probably have to be studying all weekend too, in addition to the weekdays. So the next question is, are MIT graduates guaranteed a working permit and what are your plans? No, MIT graduates aren't guaranteed a working permit, but I will say that an MIT degree does really help when you're applying to different job positions. It may not guarantee you a position at a really high up company because those are competitive regardless of what school you're from. But you should rest assured that if you're graduating from MIT that you should be able to get some type of job opportunity. The next question is where does your drive to succeed come from and how do you overcome procrastination? So I'm really thinking about making a full length video talking about this but the short story of that is just that I know that I'm in a very privileged situation in terms of where I've grown up and the opportunities that I presented myself. And I know that a lot of people don't have as many opportunities as I've had in terms of being able to attend MIT and being able to attend a high school that was public, but it was a really good academic high school that gave me a really good foundation to succeed at a place like MIT. And what pushes me is that I don't want to take any of those things for granted and I'm going to use that to push my success as far ahead as possible because I want to be able to, in the end, inspire other people to go reach for these lofty dreams regardless of how far off that they may seem. The next question is how do you manage your time, exercise, vlog, etc. and still do well in school? 
Honestly, that's a tough one. I think that I don't sleep as much sometimes as I should. I average around like five hours, 45 minutes of sleep during the semester. And the only time I get over six hours is usually on Sundays. And how I balance everything is the fact that I know priority wise what I want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I schedule things out in advance so I know on a certain day whether I'm going to be studying for a certain test or doing a certain piece set or doing a task for maybe my fraternity or maybe playing a basketball game or working out. If I put everything down on paper, I can see that, yeah, there is enough time to do everything. I might not have time to, say, go watch a movie or, say, go to a party but I know that I have enough time to do the things that I want to do in that given day. So that keeps me motivated to continue to try and do those things because I know that at the end of the day, I do have time to do them. The next question is, if you were to be anything other than an engineer, what would you be? So I think there are a couple of things. I would probably want to be an entrepreneur where I would be trying to come up with new ideas of products or projects that fill a certain gap in the market or in society today and I'll try to work with other people and other engineers to make stuff like that happen and try to start businesses off of those things. On the other hand, I'd probably be still doing this. This isn't anywhere related to engineering, but I like making these videos and I may have considered going just YouTube full time and continue to inspire people and continue to review tech products that I really like. And yeah, that's probably what I would have been doing. So this next question is from Healthful Bites, which is another MIT student on campus that has this cool food page. And she asked, how did you know you wanted to go to do grad school? Honestly, it just hit me all at once one day because I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do in the future. And I had done a couple of internships in an aerospace company. And I think one day it hit me that if I wanted to be a manager or higher up in one of those places, then I'd probably have to work a couple of years and like build a reputation. But if I went to grad school, if I got a PhD, I'll have that doctorate. So that'll give me the respect I needed to go straight into some higher positions at certain companies. And also, I knew that if I want to be in a like chief executive role, PhDs are really valuable in obtaining those positions. And also just learning more things will put me in a better position to maybe start my own company because I'll be researching something that has never been researched before. So next question is, what are some things you didn't expect about MIT? And honestly, the biggest thing that I didn't expect was the community that I have formed at MIT. My fraternity has a bunch of people that I'm really close to and know that I can go back to whenever I need something or whenever I need to talk to somebody. I know that they have my back. And honestly, being around this community, which are mainly people of color, is really inspiring. And they have all gone against all odds and gone against certain um, step backs to get to where they are today. And they're all going to be doing great things, which is also another inspiring thing that keeps me going on a day-to-day -day basis. And also outside my fraternity, I've met some other really cool people that you've probably seen in these videos that are really good friends of mine. So yeah, the people are probably the thing that I didn't expect when coming to MIT. So I've gotten a lot of questions about how my application process is going right now, and I'm going to dedicate a whole video to this, so just stay tuned for that. I'll get into detail, don't worry. The next question is from Andrew and asks, what is the phone of the year? And honestly, I think the phone of the year, in my opinion, is the iPhone 11 Pro. I think because Apple has been stagnant for many years, I've actually been team Android for the past five years or so. But this iPhone took it a step further with the camera and a lot of shots that you see in my vlogs that are like in classes or something have been from the iPhone. And it has been a really great camera and also the battery life has been excellent so I that's why I use it on a daily basis. So a lot of these questions have also asked about MIT and their financial aid policies and to those I'd say that MIT 
will accept you if you're qualified to get in, regardless of how much money your family makes. And I think they do a pretty good job of taking that situation into account and giving the financial aid that's reasonable for that situation. So if you absolutely don't have any money, MIT will try their best to just pay for your tuition and pay for housing and pay for food and stuff like that. So I think the first thing that you should worry about is getting into MIT and then figure out with the financial aid office to see how much funding you can get. And there's also outside scholarships. I personally have an outside scholarship on top of the stuff that MIT gave me. So really just look around, try to find scholarships and MIT should try to make up the difference. The next question is what is your favorite tech in 2019? And honestly, I think that goes to the iPad Pro. I use it on a daily basis. I use it to write my notes. I use it to watch Netflix. I use it to watch Hulu. And I've even used it to read emails and finish coding assignments before. So it's just an all-in-one package that's designed really well. It's really light. It's always in my backpack. And yeah, that's my go-to device. The next question is what made you start a YouTube channel and who was your mentor all the way through your success? So what made me start my YouTube channel in the first place was just the fact that I've always loved tech channels and I've loved consumer tech. I really loved all these new smartphones. So I already knew a lot about them. It was just an issue of whether I had enough to buy the camera, buy the microphone. And when I came out of my first internship at MIT, that's when I had enough money to buy the camera and buy a microphone. So I just went for it and I started. And uh, there have been some people that have helped me throughout the way that have been like Michael Fisher from the Mr. Mobile and Jaime Rivera from Pocket Now, they've given me some valuable advice. And I've met a lot of people at CES and events like that that have helped me through and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a pretty cool community to be a part of. So the last question I'm going to answer today is from Jules, and she asked if you could give any advice to your freshman yourself, what would it be? And honestly, the only piece of advice that I'd give myself is to just keep moving forward and keep working hard and keep doing the best that you can in every situation, in every class, because no matter how hard it is in that moment, it will be for a certain reason and that success will lead to further success down the line and open up many more opportunities. So just keep working hard, keep staying motivated and you'll do fine. So that's all the questions that I've had time to answer today and I'm really excited to go to CES tomorrow so really look forward to a lot of CES content, a lot more content in general as I get this busy time of year out of the way. If you made it this far to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a 20% off discount to these hoodies. These Believe in Yourself hoodies are a major project of mine and if you use the promo code PIXELBOOK, you'll get 20% off these hoodies so go get those now and if you aren't already make sure to follow me on instagram and twitter to stay up to date with what i'm doing and as for this channel make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell click to stay up to date on my latest videos as always thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one